Hiya and welcome to the Lazy Cake Textiles podcast. It's been a few weeks, we've been incredibly busy, so we've got a lot to talk to you about. My name's Cathy, this is Jessamy, and we're a mum and daughter team and we teach spinning and weaving workshops. Um, we're based in Liverpool but we teach all around the North West and um, it's lovely to have you with us. So we're going to have a plain, um, plain podcast this time, N uh, no interviews, and we'll just have a chat about what's going on. Shall we? Let's go. So mainly for the last few weeks we've been working on samples for our double heddle weaving workshop which we've got coming up at the end of April. It's the first time we've done this this workshop, people have been asking for it for a while so we've got a full class this time but there's um, there are dates at the beginning of June and so if this is something that you've really um, wanted to learn within a group setting with support then that maybe is something that uh, you could be interested in learning. So we're just how to show you what we've been doing up to now. Mm -hmm. So we've got two of our Kromsky looms here. Mm -hmm. um, we do use different types of looms on our workshops, but um, Kromsky are the ones that we, we like to work mm -hmm. with. Um, so this is my starting of my sample of my double weaving. So if I show it side on, you can see it unfolds like that. Um, and so it's not exactly double, um, but just under so obviously it means whatever size loom you've got you can weave a lot wider than that which is very exciting um, I've warped up obviously in these like variegated colours and a navy this is this is to help differentiate the different threads when you're threading through your heddles and then I've just woven with a white um, but I'm thinking I'm going to cut this soon and I'm going to start another one with probably the same sort of colours there to see if I can get any of my warp through because obviously it's not there at the moment and so that's my that's my plan at the moment. Yeah so what happens is which is a bit sort of you know you, it blows your mind a little bit doesn't it for when you're weave, weaving double the width um, you thread the back uh, heddle first and then you thread it in a certain way and then you put the the front heddle on and those threads are all sort of um, they go kind of like a, a diagonal, don't they? So you thread it up and then that way you weave a top section and then a bottom section of your of your fabric. So um, it's four steps to the pattern and you weave the top section first and the bottom section and it remains open at one side but then it's sealed at the other side so that you can open it out as a cloth. So it's like magic. Um, and it's not super complicated but you do need to you do need to be able to to concentrate when you do it have you enjoyed it i have yeah um it it does take a lot longer than normal weaving it hasn't grown as quickly as as it usually would um obviously because there's so many different steps and there's usually two pickup sticks at the back there but i've taken them out just as i brought them brought this to the studio um but yeah, I think it's it's really satisfying when it goes when it goes right, um, because just one one little thing goes wrong and, and everything mm -hmm. kind of falls apart. And so it's been finding out those little different things. Um, yeah. So with mine, I, the sampling that I've been doing is um, I've done some different types of uh, twill on mine. So uh, put the glasses on. So this is diamond twill. I've done it in variegated yarn there. I obviously need to do some hem stitch with this little bit there. And I've done it with the white there. And the pattern, this is this is much simpler, much simpler steps to this one. So I think we'll do this on day one. Mm. So ease people in gently, do a very thin, thin section of warp. And then we'll start off with the diamond twill. And then we'll go on to the double width weaving on day two so that it's kind of one step to to be able to accomplish something quite quite quickly and this it's just I absolutely love it I love this I also love that <clears throat> this is sock yarn this is variegated sock yarn but I love weaving with um with silks and to be able to get a really fine set um using silks so we've got some this is this is just some normal dyed um, 
high twist, high twist sock yarn, and this is what we use on our workshops, on our weaving workshops. So when you see the scarves that people produce, it's usually done in this type of yarn. But this yarn, I'll get these two, which have been, these are naturally dyed yarns, and these are silk alpaca, uh, silk alpaca and merino, and um, they're lace weight and they're just such beautiful fine yarns and so for your on your rigid heddle if you use two heddles then you're able to get a really close set so I'll show you a little bit what that looks like looks like that so it's really really nice and uh, and I love that I love that um, that close set and just playing with colors really um, so we're going to have a little chat about set in a little while. So this is our new studio that we've just moved into this morning, our little tiny space. And this is where you can come and try out um, the looms before you buy. Um, we've done a video of how to find us because the, the address can be a little bit mm. convoluted and long. So we are in Road Studios which is within the Northern Lights building, but the entrance is through Ride Cafe, um, which we always recommend because we love the food and the people are really friendly. And a lot, majority of the time when people come on our workshops, they always go there for lunch, yeah. don't they? Um, and so usually if we have a workshop, we tell people just go and wait in there and we'll come and, we'll come and find you. Um, and yeah, so we're upstairs in the building. Um, we're in a big shared space but we've got quite a bit of room at the moment and we've got some some of our looms here and so we can arrange to have more here for you if you want to come and have a look and have a little test out of things and see what sort of thing you're looking for. And we've also got a, a special offer in April which is if you do buy a loom you get 20% off a workshop. So if you are considering buying a loom but you're a little bit nervous about it then come and have a chat with us, come and have a look at the sizes of looms We've got we've got all the sizes here. You know, they start at eight inch, then it's sixteen, then twenty four, then thirty two, and you can come and have a have a weave on it and see whether which size is going to suit you better. And because um, some people think, oh, I'll go for the largest size, but actually, when they sit there, they find that it, maybe it's too much for them to cope with. So um, it's really worth uh, working out. And then if you feel that you um, you'd like to learn then we can book you in straight away and then it's you know it's a smooth smooth transition it'll give you the confidence that you you're looking for really to be able to to weave and also work with some gorgeous gorgeous shades of yarn as well you tell us what you want and we will make sure that we've got them there on the day <clears throat> alternatively if you're not 100 percent sure whether it's going to be your type of thing because we know that it is a big investment um, you can always come on one of our workshops, our weaver scarf or our two day weaving and we've got looms there to buy if at the end of the workshop you think oh yeah actually this is something that I could really enjoy then we've got them there available for you to buy as well. And we're not even biased towards one or the other. On our weaver scarf workshops we do use Kromsky looms, Ashford looms and Schacht looms so we've got a mix of those so um, if people come on our two day uh, weaving classes they tend to bring their own looms and so we're happy for you to bring in bring an Ashford loom if that's the loom, the loom that you have or the one that you feel comfortable with and um, so yeah we're, we're pretty flexible about stuff like that <clears throat> we have recently had a two-day weaving workshop I'll put in some little clips from that so we what we've been up to recently we've done that haven't we we've still doing our um, sheep to skein class and um, and if anybody did want to join on, we're just doing a a, a drop on sort of arrangement now. Um, it's like a rolling course, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Um, so the people, some people have been there since day one, and so they're obviously getting a lot more confident with what they're doing. And so we might do it where they can just come in and use the equipment for um, for less price, and we're obviously there on hand if you know you need any little pointers but it won't be it'll be more on you whatever you're fancy and doing on that particular day whether it you want to do a bit of dyeing or spinning or weaving or whatever 
um, and we'll obviously have other people there who have maybe just started the class or maybe just a bit just kind of halfway through and um, and so it's going to be really nice we're going to have lots of people doing lots of different things which is very exciting we've had a few people contact us because it's coming up for shearing time and so people have got they want to support the farmers which as you know if you haven't seen our interview with ed um, from the wool circle please go back and have a look at that because it's really fascinating but it's coming up for shearing time soon and so um, people will have access to different types of um, of fleeces and so if you because we have the equipment we've got drum carders we've got hand carders we've got combs then you can come and and just use our equipment and and process your fleeces slowly because it is slow <laughs> it's a slow um it's a slow process but obviously people don't always have the equipment in their own place so we're happy to uh, let people um, have a go here and in this lovely lovely space okay so glasses on we're going to have a little chat about set get all my kit ready so the last time when we talked about set we said that um, we gave you sort of like an, uh, a bit of a, an idea of what yarns would suit what heddle size. So if you remember, there are different heddle sizes. And I've, like I say, we've got, we use different looms. So I have got three different heddles or reeds. Um, it's interchangeable. Those, those terms are interchangeable on a rigid heddle loom. So um, I have got this Ashford heddle. And if you look on there, it says 7.5 DPI. This uh, uh, shacked heddle, that's 10 DPI. And on the shacked, it does say it, but it's helpfully in white on white. But if you look very closely, it does say a 10. And Kromsky it doesn't say it anywhere, which is also <laughs> helpful. So I've written it on there. So um, the, the DPI is dense per inch. And so have a look on the Ashford there. When it's talking about dense per inch, it means these holes and the slots in an inch. So how many of those holes and slots in an inch would be the, the dense per inch? Now, the last time we talked about it, on average, if you just wanted to get going, your 7.5, that would be your, uh, your double knit. If you were looking for a 10, if you got a 10 DPI heddle, then that would suit sock yarn. And, and so we said as a rule of thumb if you wanted it going and you wanted to use your stash then you could those those heddles would really work what if you're a spinner or what if you've got yarn that you're a bit sort of not sure about the about gauge how would you work out your set then well, i've got a ruler here you can get yarn gauges from um wool festivals or things like that or uh well fiber shops so i've got a lovely ruler here which I've just borrowed from somebody else's uh, studio and in an inch there I'm going to take our yarn and going to wrap it around an inch worth now we don't want those can you just put that on the floor we don't want those to overlap each other I want them just to be snugly placed next to each other and this is a double knit yarn. But as you know, double knits can be, you know, there's quite a sort of a lot of um, difference in gauge with some double knits. So if I wrap, wrap that around an inch, then that is, I'm gonna count that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 wraps per inch. So what you would do if you with your unknown fiber, you would say, well, <coughs> What yarn, what, what heddle will suit that yarn? So you, we half it because we take into account the, the warp and the weft and that, that, that um, yarn is going to go up and down the warp and the weft. So we half it. So half of 15 is seven and a half. That's right. <laughs> I'm so clever. Seven and a half. So that would suit your seven and a half DPI heddle. Now, Cromsey have an 8 DPI heddle. That's going to work as well. So just go to your nearest nearest heddle size. So with this one, this one is this sock yarn, the high twist sock yarn. So a lot of indie dyers use high twist sock yarn. 
um, that will wrap around an inch 19 times. So you'd be looking at using your 10 dent per inch heddle because ideally because that would be half nearest enough half. Now if you've got a load of sock yarn but you've only got your 7.5 or your 8 dents per inch heddle then you would you could double up and instead of having one yarn in the in the dent and one in the one in the eye or in the slot and one in the eye you can double up and do two in the slot and two in the eye and that would that would work out fine that would work out really well so if you do that though it will it will double your it will double your set so whereas that would be seven you'd have seven dents per inch that will double up so that would be 15 so you would double it up so that's that's your set when we talk about set now if you're going to do a perfectly balanced weave then you would um when you're with your weft you would want ideally if you're if you're using 7.5 dent heddle so that would mean that you've got your ends which is what your warp threads are called if you've got one in each each slot and one in each eye you would have 7.5 ends per inch as well your dents and your ends would be the same because would be one in the slot and one in the eye so when if we get a perfectly balanced weave with your weft you would want 7.5 of your weft um, threads in there as well and your weft threads are called picks so you'd want 7.5 ends per inch in your 7.5 dent per inch heddle and you'd want 7.5 ish um, picks per inch as well for an ideally uh, balanced weave for a perfect balanced weave I personally think that that's a little bit that it's a little bit too much gap for me personally I like it a little bit closer but when they talk about balanced weave that's what they're talking about so if you've got if you've doubled up in your heddle and you've got 15 ends per inch in your 7.5 dents per inch heddle then your weft your picks per inch would need, want to be 15 as well to get a perfectly balanced weave now you can play around a little bit with that and but ideally that is what that is what we're talking about with set so you can play around with set because if you beat your yarn very close if you've come on one of our classes or if you've you've beaten your yarns at home because that gap that you leave to get a balanced weave that sometimes that goes a little bit against the grain it's not something that people are very comfortable with and they like to beat very closely and then what will happen is they will beat out their their warp threads so we feel really sad about that sometimes mm. don't we because on our classes people spend a lot of time thinking about colors that they want to work with and we dye them and they send us pictures of where they went on their honeymoon or things like that and then they get their yarns and then they beat and beat and beat and that's what they're comfortable with so that's fine but it beats out that lovely uh, those lovely warp colors so if you do that and all you can see is your weft then that is a technique isn't it and that's called weft faced weaving and you would want a really really closely beaten piece of cloth if you were using if you were making a table runner maybe or what else like placemats yeah or maybe a, a wall hanging mm. um thinking if you yeah. even if you did something really really closely beaten and then you wanted to do some like embroidery on it or something oh, yeah, like that'd that that'd nice. probably make it a lot easier to have yeah. that stability there yeah yeah that's true and so these things aren't wrong and i i, I don't like people say oh it's, i've done it wrong i've done it wrong you haven't done it wrong you've just you've just done a different technique if you then want to have warp faced weaving which is showing your warp more than your weft then you would have more threads in your warp than you would in your weft in an inch so your set would not be balanced it would not be a balanced weave but that's still a technique as well and so you would have um, a lot less weft threads than you would have warp threads so you could see your warp a lot more than your weft and there's a, a an artist called Ptolemy Mann and she a, a, a lot of her work is warp faced and it's absolutely beautiful so these things with set they are things they are um, techniques that you can play around with as a weaver and see what suits you but just to let you know 
that that's what that's what set is when you're talking about set and sometimes if you have little things that go wrong um if you're gapping in your in your weaving or uh it goes a little bit your, your warp thread separate that can be to do with set that can be to do do with set issues so sampling and experimenting is the way forward really it's uh it's good to do little little uh, pieces like like we've done there we've done quite thin quite thin warps and small little sample pieces because it's just nice to uh, experiment and play with your, with your colours and with your techniques. So what have we got coming up in the next few weeks? We've got a beginner spinning workshop this Friday and that's at Black Sheep Wools. We've mentioned Black Sheep Wools before um, but those who haven't been it is a yarn shop in Colchith and if you are close by or, I mean, they've got a shop online as well, haven't mm -hmm. they? We would definitely recommend it. It's very exciting. Um, they've got a workroom in the back. They run all kinds of workshops. We do spinning and weaving there, but they've got loads of different different workshops going on, haven't they? Um, and they also have a, a lovely cafe. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to have a little bit of a nosy round and then have a bit of tea and cake, then they have that available as well, which is very lovely. Yeah, and it's a family-run mm. It's a family run um, yarn shop that's been established... Uh, for a long time, so it was established by the mum and now it's run by um, Sarah and Steve, the daughter and son. And so it's really nice to support those those yarn shops, um, if you can. Yeah. Um, and then in two weeks we've got our double heddle weaving. Um, and so that's a first for us, so that's very exciting. Um, a little bit nerve-wracking, yeah. but I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, most of the people who are coming have been before on workshops and so they're, they're friends really mm. which is which is nice we get to know people mm. really well so so you feel like there's not that same sort of pressure because they they know us which is really nice mm. so the six six people come in on that that uh, that workshop so we'll you know yeah that'd be great mm. yeah um so before we finish I'm going to add a little video at the end which is a little guide of how to find us from Parliament Street in Liverpool and so from the entrance of Cane's Brewery Village um, so I'll add that in at the end um, but before we do I'd just like to say thank you all for watching and um, hopefully it won't be that long in between our yeah. next hopefully next we've episode. got a we've got an interview next time with a weaver so that's all in the pipeline it's um it's uh we just need to go up and and visit don't we but that's we're, we are really looking forward to that a lot of there's a lot of um talent out there in the in the northwest um and we we want to we want to like interview all these people don't we it's yeah. very exciting so uh, yeah lovely to see you and we'll see you soon bye, bye.